In this section, we are going to show you how to create an unmargin panel. First of all, take your template, bring it into the workshop where it's nice and warm, and you've got good light. Using a bit of your masking tape, it's helpful just to fix the edges down so your panel doesn't, your template doesn't move on you. The next thing we have to do is work out where the centre line is. You will have already marked the orientation of the panels. So taking your straight edge, carefully work out exactly where the centre line is going to be. In this case, Marking clearly, so you don't make any mistakes later on. Sometimes it's a good idea just to take your centre line outside the panel, so when you've laid your strips on, you can still see where it is. Once you have that marked clearly, you can take your roll of material and start cutting the lengths to the right size. We would always advise you to cut them a little oversized because when you weld them together you can then trim the ends nice and neatly to the precise size that you require. So using your anvil cutters, you find that it's quite straightforward. Just cut a few centimetres over the size of your template. Once you've cut all your strips to the slightly oversized length, as you can see here, it's quite a cold day and they are not lying flat. So if you take your hot air gun, what you need to do is to gently warm them, keeping the uh, hot air gun moving all the time. Don't let it stay in one, in one point too long. Basically, just gently warm them through and you'll find that they'll start to sag and quite quickly go flat. As you can see, once they've had a little warm air, all, the all these strips here have gone nice and flat and you'll find they're far more manageable to, uh, to work with. You'll find they all just slot in together very nicely like that. When creating your panel, it's very important to ensure that you keep these all straight. So I'm going to add a straight edge, which is simply going to be clamped to the table, but I'm using the, the edge of it precisely parallel with the edge of the panel. I'm simply going to use a couple of clamps, one either end, to secure it in position. You can see it's flush with the edge of the template. I can now begin to stick the separate plank together. And that will use a tube of cold weld adhesive. If you look at the uh, cross section of the Retic extrusion, you will find that there are male and female parts to it, as well as the tunnel under section there. When sticking the strips together, it's best to apply the adhesive to the female part along the bottom edge. So when the male part slots in, the adhesive goes 
right into the channel and tends not to come to the surface which would interfere with the weld. Remove the stopper, which you'll find has a little piercing section on it. Pierce it, put on the nozzle and then using a pair of snips just cut the end very carefully so you have a very small hole there to dispense the adhesive. And then carefully run a bead of the adhesive, not too, not too much, not so it's squelching all over the place. Very evenly, straightforward, smooth action down the full length of the plank. Take your next strip and simply slot it straight on the side. And fix them together with just a little bit of a pushing action. You've got your first two strips and it's simply a case of repeating the operation Pushing them together like that. Repeat until you come to the other end of the template. After a short break of around 10 minutes, your panel will now be reasonably strong, ready to proceed to the next section. I've removed the, uh, ten, uh, the, the straight edge here, as we don't need it, and you will need to remove your template from underneath, as any use of hot air tools now will cause the panel to will cause the template to shrink, um, and obviously we don't we don't want that. So remove that. You now have your panel, which we can now either cork or in this particular instance we're going to top weld it using the hot air welder. Use the welder and the nozzle. It's a 5 mil nozzle and you simply push it onto the end there. Now you're going to need to position the nozzle so when you're holding it you've got the aperture for the weld rod at the top. So we're going to weld using this method. When you come to the end, you can simply put it down on its base and then proceed to the next line. So, we'll turn the welder on. You'll find there's a nice LED light here that helps illuminate the channel as you proceed down it. I will get some weld rod here. There's a strip of weld rod. What we need to do is basically cut it just a, tiny, a couple of centimetres over size. You'll find that as you use it, there will be a little stretching of the weld rod. So when you get to the end, you'll find that it will have grown a little bit. So don't worry. You don't need to cut them exactly to length. Just give a little bit of excess and you'll find that when you come to the end of the run, there will be plenty of wire left over. Okay, turn it on, leave the welder for about a minute to warm up. Welding is very simple. You say, take your weld, welder like this, place your weld rod in, if it's a little cold, sometimes it's a nice idea just to pull it through a couple of times as it softens the weld rod, makes it a little more manageable. Place your weld rod on the end there and giving it a little 
firm pressure downwards, not too much, just a little bit, just a nice steady smooth pace, just weld along the channel. You'll find that the welder, although you may wobble a little bit, the weld rod will sit in the recess quite easily. And just proceed all the way down, reasonable gentle pace, keep it moving to prevent any burn. If you, if you were to hold it in one place there would be a bit of scorching and that's obviously undesirable. Proceed right to the end and off the other side and that is your first weld completed. Simply replicate the whole thing right until the end. So, again, pull the weld rod through, maybe a couple of times just to warm it up. Stick a little piece on the end, stick it out on the end, and then off you go again, just as before. A bit of downward pressure. Nothing too excessive, and just keep a nice smooth motion all the way down. It's not rocket science, it's a very simple process. Maybe an idea just to practice on a, a little bit of waste initially, just so you can gauge the speed. You see the weld rod has grown a little bit. Right, that's all the joints welded up. That panel is now all welded together. And the next stage is to cut the top of the welds off. For that, we use this sharpened pallet knife. However, if you've got a sharp chisel at home, that will equally suffice. Just very carefully get your knife on there with a little bit of pressure and very smooth at a very low angle so you don't cut into the material. Just slide all the way down the weld right to the end. And again, this is a process of repetition, exactly the same. Nice smooth action all the way through and off the end again. And as you can see, you've got lovely, clean, sharp cork lines, fully waterproof fully welded system. Now you have a completed sheet, just a slightly oversized to the panel that you, uh, you templated. The next phase, you see it's, it's now all one piece, all strong, no joints that will open up. It's a fully waterproof sheet. The next job will be to return to your template and lay it on top of your sheet. Taking care to ensure the centre line in this case is right down the middle of a cork line. However, if the combination wasn't quite right you could then put the centre line down the middle of the plank to ensure continuity on the edge when you cut it. So, position your template carefully and then using some sort of heavy weight to position to anchor it. Just, in this case we're using a diver's weight. Just put your template in position and with your straight edge 
carefully cut down through the template the first edge. Don't try and cut right through in the first go because all you'll do is slip. Holding it very carefully in the same position cut through and then just rotate the panel without moving the template off the top and repeat and cut all four edges. As you can see here we've got some rounded edges we can follow template with a knife very carefully to complete the rounded edge. If you do that all four sides and then remove the template and you can find that it's simply a case of using the knife to cut right through the last bit to maintain the shape of your panel. Once you've cut all the way round, you'll find you have now a completed reteak panel. The panel as such as it stands at this moment is perfectly adequate for recessed decks such as on the Moody's because you've got a, a square edge here. However, if you want to surface mount it, very much like it's sitting on the top of the table here, you may wish to radius the edge. Now that can be done in a variety of ways. You can use a surf form or a plane just to whisk the edge off a piece. But what we tend to use is a knife. So to correct the radius edge, using your finger as a guide, just cut about a 45 degree angle, a couple of mil slither, smoothly and uniformly off down the edge here doesn't matter if it wobbles a little bit because you can even that out with a, the with a sandpaper cut an edge down there and then taking the sanding block long smooth strokes all the way down and all you're doing is sanding yourself a nice radius edge onto the edge of the panel. The beauty of the reteak profile is that it's one profile, one strip has several purposes and there you now have a radius edge for a surface mounted panel. And obviously repeat all the way around and that's it. And that is your finished reteak panel. It's a fully welded panel with radius edges with a unique reteak understructure that prevents lifting in the future once it's been stuck down. The, the tunnel shaped section there allows the adhesive to enter and once it's cured it's, it has a dovetail type action that prevents lifting.